Amaya. Hailing from a sanctuary town created by her great-great-grandmother in the mountains of the Everlasting, in her villas, once you become an adult and show signs of being God-touched, you are to go out into the world. Thus, once she became an adult, her parents sent her out into the world to learn and grow wise. Helping people and getting closer with Kelmore, her god, was her main goal. She set out from the base of the mountain home she had known all her life. Following the winds and wills of Kelmore, she traveled south along a trade road. After a week of travels, while she is resting, she has an encounter that will change her entire life as she is approached by guards from Eskatar. Mithria. The youngest in her family, her father is a foreign affairs diplomat and mother is from a major merchant house, so she was left to her own devices for most of her adolescent and adult life. After a major argument with her parents, she starts to sneak out to watch local tavern plays. Being inspired, she soon started to perform herself. After some time of performing, she met a human traveler and soon fell head over heels for him. When they went to her parents, they immediately did not approve. Planning on running away, they were soon stopped by her brother Sir Adithus, back from his training to be a knight of Heronius. Invoking some sort of spell, Mithria's love Romero was gone as she was taken back to the family estate. Heartbroken, she broke out with what was on her back and the ring her love gave her, and she snuck out and made it to the mainland to find out what happened to her love and get powerful enough to save him from her dastardly brother. Rawin. Hailing from a tribe of Goliaths far up in the mountains of the Everlasting, he grew up with the teachings of his elders, strength and success above all else. Those that were weak had no place in society and were cast out. Unfortunately, during a hunting trip, he caused an accident which led to a few of the warriors getting badly hurt. He was cast out with only his weapon. Wanting to prove he wasn't weak, he survived in the winds when he heard whispers in them. Following them, it led him down the mountain to the lands below. Little did he know, Sylvanus had seen him and was going to be tasking him with the protection of the land. Fenrith Fenrith grew up in a small tribe in the forest with their patron Tinzanth the Glimmerfang, along the borders of Sephir, Olympica, and Veltur. They lived a peaceful life, surviving off the land and trading with passing travelers. Growing up, Fenrith always enjoyed fighting, whether it be a friendly sparring match or fighting to protect his home and friends. When he came of age, the tribe leader sent Fenrith out to prove his abilities and return stronger to better protect the forest, while also gaining tributes for Tizanth's sword. Severinth. Waking up in a meadow and not remembering much, Severinth started to tend to the local area for a while, before traveling out and finding a group of druids who taught him their ways. He soon started to wander further and further out, until one day he let the winds take him, and he found himself following a trail of hill giants. An off feeling followed him as he wandered about, as if something deep down was drawn. And as he left the grove, a need for money took root in his soul. The more he gets, the more it grows. D'Artagnan, waking up in some laboratory, he ran out, grabbing a leather jacket and finding a knife used in the laboratory. He grabbed it and ran. Running into some sort of assistant, they fell in a heap. Seeing a wand with a glowing sapphire on the tip slide across the floor, he grabs it, figuring it would help him, and he ran. Following random corridors till he got out into the night and to his thought freedom. He ran and ran, trying to escape whomever he was experimented on by. For days, he tried to scavenge for sustenance, trying to remember who took him and what happened. All he could hear was Illithid, Hive Mind, Ceramorphosis in his mind. Flashes in his mind started to happen with figures over him when he was tortured, being four tentacled octopi faced beings. <laughs> 